Well, hello, my name is Raphael Lang. I'm an inventor. I'm not tired, I'm still here. Well, if you think inventor, maybe it's a quite avant-garde job. I can tell you it's a really um, traditional job. In the 60s, I know from uh, the uncle of a friend of mine, he was hired by Mercedes, and in his working contract, he was hired as an inventor. So, it's a kind of traditional job. Maybe in future, the companies start hiring inventors again. Today I talk about reinvent the computer, the computer everybody dressing has with uh, it by itself. Um, but when you are an inventor, you not only invent computers, you go really right. For example, this year we traveled to Namibia and we said, okay, reinvent something for the first humans in the world, the Nama, maybe you know them, they talk with this really special language to explain something. And we went there and said, okay, we can invent a kind of fog collector and power mile in the same unit. And this really changed the world. They can collect around 50 liters of water a night. They can produce their own energy. So it really changed, if you were inventing something, the life of people. And that makes it really powerful nowadays. The second thing, maybe you know in Stuttgart, uh, the city built a lot of loading stations for the electric cars out there. Quite big boxes, quite huge. huge. Every parking space has one of these boxes. I can say in two or three years, they're going to be removed because we reinvent the loading station for the electric cars. It's highly more efficient. We make a patent with sponsor of us tonight. So I think it also will impact our life in Stuttgart in the future. So maybe you take this. Tonight, I talk about my main focus point. It's reinventing the computer. Think behind. What, how, how the future computer can be. Everybody using computers. But, hey, look at the computer. 47 years lack of innovation. IBM, 2250, 1966, charging keyboard, even 3D graphics, wow. And an input pencil, even a special keyboard. Windows 8, uh, 2013, touching keyboard. Oh, it's almost the same. Even I think um, the design was even a little bit more Apple style, I would say. So, 47 years, lack of innovation. I think so, yeah. 47 years, we got inspired. A computer should look like a book, and it is. If we have a notebook, it's even inside the name. If we have a laptop, it's even something that looks like a book somehow. So, we said, hey, you know, maybe a computer can look different. And as young inventors, we got to change to show that. Um, 2011, my great team, Stephen Chan from Hong Kong, me, Rafael Lang, and Julian Hun from Taiwan, we participated for Shitsu Design Award, and our goal was look behind the object, first rule. If you want to reinvent something, if you want to reinvent a chair, um, don't look, okay, I want to design a chair like a designer. Don't think like an engineer, oh, I, let's make the chair like that, and we focus on the technology. No, you have to look behind the object. So if you think reinvent the chair, you have to think, body support, and this makes a difference. This brings the creativity. So, in a long time, wow, we make brainstorming half a year. We came to a certain point, Julian was playing around with this, with a cord, like that. He had in the hand, brainstorming, and I saw, I said, wow, that's the future computer, it's flexible. You can bend it, you can even do it like that. And maybe the future computer, if you want to extend the screen, you do like this. So, yeah, why not? Why don't make a uh, future computer like a cord? Okay, we said we do it. So, yeah, sounds crazy, but we did. So, this is it. So, we make a computer that looks like a cord, and inside you have a display. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fiction everybody sees here. But, that's the first part of innovation, or inventing something. You have to take a fantasy, make something, and you just make a kind of philosophic model, how it could be. And then you say, okay, now we realize it. And here it comes. It should be flexible. You can bend it, move it. So the computer's not it's like a fixed form, like a book. Inside you can touch, doing something, your desktop. So we create a technology that can do that. I, I explained it, but first I'll show you. This is the prototype with few parts. So it's flexible, you can bend it, however. 
Uh, what we said, okay, the future computer, we use some future key technologies. The first is you have an array of cameras, you know, these cameras you have in your smartphone or like in your computer. The second one, you have uh, mini beamers, which you know maybe from some extenders from modern uh, smartphones. It's quite super small beamers, like a sand cone, you can beam everywhere. But if you combine this on a flexible circuit board, which is also easily available, you have a flexible computer. And this is super powerful, because when you have something flexible, you have a thousand more user cases. You can sit together, you can plug the computer each other, so you can extend your monitor easily. You can bend it, so you can make different screens, you can play around. And what's the most greatest innovation? You have a mobile 3D scanner, because when you have two cameras, and you have two beamers focusing on one point, it's a 3D scanner, and hey, you have a mobile 3D scanner. You can go around scanning objects in the supermarket. It's like a three-dimensional sketchbook. And this brings somehow the computer technology in a totally new light. It's more interactive, more playful, more playing around with the technology. And this is what one of the points when I think reinvent the computer, think behind, try out new things, play with the technology. That brings the topic alive. Here you can see, this is the prototype. Um, well, I hope maybe in two years you can buy it. Hope so. It's not easy to find investing capital in, in Stuttgart. <laughs> well, one serious topic, how you think about reinvent a computer. It's a project I do with my partner, Camilo Anabalon. He's actually the inventor of this. Um, we think computing is not about uh, fancy people in the age of 30 hanging around on Facebook, spend their money on Amazon or something like that. When we think about computing, we thought, what about premature babies that are separated from the mother in the incubator and have no access to the love? They are three weeks, sometimes a month, in the incubator. They have no television, they have no radio, they have no telephone, you know, like, for example, I would be in the hospital. So we thought, what about bring haptical computing to them? What about we make a kind of Facebook for this? And Hey, you premature baby, well, how, how Facebook can you? So if you make a kind of Facebook for them, I think it's mostly about the mother and reconnect the baby with the mother. So this was our big topic. Um, so we created a mattress that can simulate how to be on the mother chest. And the mattress can move around like we here. You have the smell, you have the sound, you have everything. So it's quite haptical. So we think don't think always keyboard, don't, always, don't think always mouse on the computer, think in different categories. And what's really impressive, um, we have a kind of module, the mother is dressing, I have it here, the prototype. You have it here on the chest. And if you breathe, and maybe you're 50 kilometers away from your baby, you know, your baby feel yourself. And this is really nice. And I think this, this changed also the world massively. We have 60,000 premature babies a year, so I think it's a huge impact. And this is also something, make computing more serious, make it more haptical, make it more to read people's life. Um, something else, we always looked around, it's, hey, how is buying a car? When I go to the, buying a smart nowadays, I go to an industrial area, maybe it's not the most beautiful place of Stuttgart and select one, but my girlfriend always said, wow, the smarts are so colorful. I want to have my favorite color on my smart, and wow, and then they should paint it. And I said, okay, painting could be possible, but where's the interface? And I have it tonight here. It's the first haptical color interface in the world on stage I show. So um, make it on. Thanks. So I thought, okay, what about you go in the shop? in Stuttgart, Königstraße, and say, um, I want to design my own car, different colors, everywhere. And uh, I, I created the interface doing that. So um, I would like to go to the audience and have some colors there. So I have a smartphone, it's quite a nice color. And I say, OK, what about my favorite smartphone? What about my new car have the same color? Let's try. OK, here it is. Nice, nice. And hey, 
just for fun. I have also some vegetables here. So it works also with vegetables. Let's try. Okay, yellow. Yeah, and what's really amazing, it's not about something only a fixed object. You can have also a ball that is with a kind of color gradient. So it's a kind of color joystick. So you can switch seamless between the colors. So it's a kind of new experience. It's something different, different than have only something with touch or something keyboard that the old philosophy of computer is. So what's the conclusion of everything? I would say we should leave the, the current tracks thinking, wow, a computer is only just a keyboard with a mouse. We have to look behind. We have to look um, how, how we can impact with computing the life and society. And for me as inventor, I want to bring the haptical computing in all of your lives. Thank you. <laughs>